the Congress shall establish an independent central monetary authority, the members of whose governing board must be natural-born Filipino citizens, of known probity, integrity, and patriotism, the majority of whom shall come from the private sector. They shall also be subject to such other qualifications and disabilities as may be prescribed by law. The authority shall provide policy direction in the areas of money, banking, and credit. It shall have supervision over the operations of banks and exercise such regulatory powers as may be provided by law over the operations of finance companies and other institutions performing similar functions. Until the Congress otherwise provides, the Central Bank of the Philippines operating under existing laws, shall function as the Central Monetary Authority. Section 21 foreign loans may only be incurred in accordance with law and the regulation of the monetary authority. Information on foreign loans obtained or guaranteed by the government shall be made available to the public. Section 22. Acts which circumvent or negate any of the provisions of this article shall be considered inimical to the national interest and subject to criminal and civil sanctions, as may be provided by law. Article XIII Social Justice and Human Rights Section 1 The Congress shall give highest priority to the enactment of measures that protect and enhance the right of all the people to human dignity, reduce social, economic, and political inequalities, and remove cultural inequities by equitably diffusing wealth and political power for the common good. To this end, the state shall regulate the acquisition, ownership, use, and disposition of property and its increments. Section 2. The promotion of social justice shall include the commitment to create economic opportunities based on freedom of initiative and self-reliance. Labor Section 3. The state shall afford full protection to labor, local and overseas, organized and unorganized, and promote full employment and equality of employment opportunities for all. It shall guarantee the rights of all workers to self-organization, collective bargaining and negotiations, and peaceful concerted activities, including the right to strike in accordance with law. They shall be entitled to security of tenure, humane conditions of work, and a living wage. They shall also participate in policy and decision-making processes affecting their rights and benefits as may be provided by law. The state shall promote the principle of shared responsibility between workers and employers and the preferential use of voluntary modes in settling disputes, including conciliation, and shall enforce their mutual compliance therewith to foster industrial peace. The state shall regulate the relations between workers and employers, recognizing the right of labor to its just share in the fruits of production and the right of enterprises to reasonable returns to investments, and to expansion and growth. Agrarian and Natural Resources Reform Section 4 The state shall, by law, undertake an agrarian reform program founded on the right of farmers and regular farm workers who are landless, to own directly or collectively the lands they till or, in the case of other farm workers, to receive a just share of the fruits thereof. To this end, the state shall encourage and undertake the just distribution of all agricultural lands, subject to such priorities and reasonable retention limits as the Congress may prescribe, taking into account ecological, developmental, or equity considerations, and subject to the payment of just compensation. In determining retention limits, the state shall respect the right of small landowners. The state shall further provide incentives for voluntary land sharing. Section 5. The state shall recognize the right of farmers, farm workers, and landowners, as well as cooperatives, and other independent farmers' organizations to participate in the planning, organization, and management of the program, and shall provide support to agriculture through appropriate technology and research, and adequate financial, production, marketing, and other support services. Section 6. The state shall apply the principles of agrarian reform or stewardship, whenever applicable in accordance with law, in the disposition or utilization of other natural resources, including lands of the public domain under lease or concession suitable to agriculture, subject to prior rights, homestead rights of small settlers, and the rights of indigenous communities to their ancestral lands. The state may resettle landless farmers and farm workers in its own agricultural estates which shall be distributed to them in the manner provided by law. 
Section 7. The state shall protect the rights of subsistence fishermen, especially of local communities, to the preferential use of the communal marine and fishing resources, both inland and offshore. It shall provide support to such fishermen through appropriate technology and research, adequate financial, production, and marketing assistance, and other services. The state shall also protect, develop, and conserve such resources. The protection shall extend to offshore fishing grounds of subsistence fishermen against foreign intrusion. Fish workers shall receive a just share from their labor in the utilization of marine and fishing resources. Section 8. The state shall provide incentives to landowners to invest the proceeds of the agrarian reform program to promote industrialization, employment creation, and privatization of public sector enterprises. Financial instruments used as payment for their lands shall be honored as equity in enterprises of their choice. Urban Land Reform and Housing Section 9. The state shall, by law, and for the common good, undertake, in cooperation with the private sector, a continuing program of urban land reform and housing which will make available at affordable cost, decent housing and basic services to underprivileged and homeless citizens in urban centers and resettlement areas. It shall also promote adequate employment opportunities to such citizens. In the implementation of such program the state shall respect the rights of small property owners. Section 10. Urban or rural poor dwellers shall not be evicted nor their dwelling demolished, except in accordance with law and in a just and humane manner. No resettlement of urban or rural dwellers shall be undertaken without adequate consultation with them and the communities where they are to be relocated. Health Section 11. The state shall adopt an integrated and comprehensive approach to health development which shall endeavor to make essential goods, health and other social services available to all the people at affordable cost. There shall be priority for the needs of the underprivileged, sick, elderly, disabled, women, and children. The state shall endeavor to provide free medical care to paupers. Section 12. The state shall establish and maintain an effective food and drug regulatory system and undertake appropriate health, manpower development, and research, responsive to the country's health needs and problems. Section 13. The state shall establish a special agency for disabled person for their rehabilitation, self-development, and self-reliance, and their integration into the mainstream of society. Women Section 14. The state shall protect working women by providing safe and healthful working conditions, taking into account their maternal functions, and such facilities and opportunities that will enhance their welfare and enable them to realize their full potential in the service of the nation. Role and Rights of People's Organizations Section 15 The state shall respect the role of independent people's organizations to enable the people to pursue and protect within the democratic framework, their legitimate and collective interests and aspirations through peaceful and lawful means. People's organizations are bona fide associations of citizens with demonstrated capacity to promote the public interest and with identifiable leadership, membership, and structure. Section 16. The right of the people and their organizations to effective and reasonable participation at all levels of social, political, and economic decision-making shall not be abridged. The state shall, by law, facilitate the establishment of adequate consultation mechanisms. Human Rights Section 17 1. There is hereby created an independent office called the Commission on Human Rights. 2. The Commission shall be composed of a chairman and four members who must be natural-born citizens of the Philippines and a majority of whom shall be members of the Bar. The term of office and other qualifications and disabilities of the members of the Commission shall be provided by law. 3. Until this Commission is constituted, the existing Presidential Committee on Human Rights shall continue to exercise its present functions and powers. 4. The approved annual appropriations of the Commission shall be automatically and regularly released. Section 18. The Commission on Human Rights shall have the following powers and functions. 1. Investigate, on its own or on complaint by any party, all forms of human rights violations involving civil and political rights. 2. 
adopt its operational guidelines and rules of procedure, and cite for contempt for violations thereof in accordance with the rules of court. 3. Provide appropriate legal measures for the protection of human rights of all persons within the Philippines, as well as Filipinos residing abroad, and provide for preventive measures and legal aid services to the underprivileged whose human rights have been violated or need protection. 4. Exercise visitorial powers over jails, prisons, or detention facilities. 5. Establish a continuing program of research, education, and information to enhance respect for the primacy of human rights. 6. Recommend to Congress effective measures to promote human rights and to provide for compensation to victims of violations of human rights, or their families. 7. Monitor the Philippine government's compliance with international treaty obligations on human rights. 8. Grant immunity from prosecution to any person whose testimony or whose possession of documents or other evidence is necessary or convenient to determine the truth in any investigation conducted by it or under its authority. 9. Request the assistance of any department, bureau, office, or agency in the performance of its functions. 10. Appoint its officers and employees in accordance with law. N. 11. Perform such other duties and functions as may be provided by law. Section 19. The Congress may provide for other cases of violations of human rights that should fall within the authority of the Commission, taking into account its recommendations. Article XIV Education, Science and Technology, Arts, Culture and Sports Education Section 1. The state shall protect and promote the right of all citizens to quality education at all levels, and shall take appropriate steps to make such education accessible to all. Section 2. The state shall 1. Establish, maintain, and support a complete, adequate, and integrated system of education relevant to the needs of the people in society. 2. Establish and maintain a system of free public education in the elementary and high school levels. Without limiting the natural rights of parents to rear their children, elementary education is compulsory for all children of school age. 3. Establish and maintain a system of scholarship grants, student loan programs, subsidies, and other incentives which shall be available to deserving students in both public and private schools, especially to the underprivileged. 4. Encourage non-formal, informal, and indigenous learning systems, as well as self-learning, independent, and out-of-school study programs particularly those that respond to community needs. And 5. Provide adult citizens, the disabled, and out-of-school youth with training in civics, vocational efficiency, and other skills. Section 3. 1. All educational institutions shall include the study of the Constitution as part of the curricula. 2. They shall inculcate patriotism and nationalism, foster love of humanity, respect for human rights, appreciation of the role of national heroes in the historical development of the country, teach the rights and duties of citizenship, strengthen ethical and spiritual values, develop moral character and personal discipline, encourage critical and creative thinking, broaden scientific and technological knowledge, and promote vocational efficiency. 3. At the option expressed in writing by the parents or guardians, religion shall be allowed to be taught to their children or wards in public elementary and high schools within the regular class hours by instructors designated or approved by the religious authorities of the religion to which the children or wards belong, without additional cost to the government. Section 4. 1. The state recognizes the complementary roles of public and private institutions in the educational system and shall exercise reasonable supervision and regulation of all educational institutions. 2. Educational institutions, other than those established by religious groups and mission boards, shall be owned solely by citizens of the Philippines or corporations or associations at least 60% of the capital of which is owned by such citizens. The Congress may, however, require increased Filipino equity participation in all educational institutions. The control and administration of educational institutions shall be vested in citizens of the Philippines. 
no educational institution shall be established exclusively for aliens and no group of aliens shall comprise more than one-third of the enrollment in any school. The provisions of the subsection shall not apply to schools established for foreign diplomatic personnel and their dependents and, unless otherwise provided by law, for other foreign temporary residents. 3. All revenues and assets of non-stock, non-profit educational institutions used actually, directly, and exclusively for educational purposes shall be exempt from taxes and duties. Upon the dissolution or cessation of the corporate existence of such institutions, their assets shall be disposed of in the manner provided by law. Proprietary educational institutions, including those cooperatively owned, may likewise be entitled to such exemptions, subject to the limitations provided by law, including restrictions on dividends and provisions for reinvestment. 4. Subject to conditions prescribed by law, all grants, endowments, donations, or contributions used actually, directly, and exclusively for educational purposes shall be exempt from tax. Section 5. 1. The state shall take into account regional and sectoral needs and conditions and shall encourage local planning in the development of educational policies and programs. 2. Academic freedom shall be enjoyed in all institutions of higher learning. 3. Every citizen has a right to select a profession or course of study, subject to fair, reasonable, and equitable admission and academic requirements. 4. The state shall enhance the right of teachers to professional advancement. Non-teaching academic and non-academic personnel shall enjoy the protection of the state. 5. The state shall assign the highest budgetary priority to education and ensure that teaching will attract and retain its rightful share of the best available talents through adequate remuneration and other means of job satisfaction and fulfillment. Language Section 6 the national language of the Philippines is Filipino. As it evolves, it shall be further developed and enriched on the basis of existing Philippine and other languages. Subject to provisions of law and as the Congress may deem appropriate, the government shall take steps to initiate and sustain the use of Filipino as a medium of official communication and as language of instruction in the educational system. Section 7 For purposes of communication and instruction, the official languages of the Philippines are Filipino and, until otherwise provided by law, English. The regional languages are the auxiliary official languages in the regions and shall serve as auxiliary media of instruction therein. Spanish and Arabic shall be promoted on a voluntary and optional basis. Section 8 this constitution shall be promulgated in Filipino and English and shall be translated into major regional languages, Arabic, and Spanish. Section 9. The Congress shall establish a National Language Commission composed of representatives of various regions and disciplines which shall undertake, coordinate, and promote researches for the development, propagation, and preservation of Filipino and other languages. Science and Technology Section 10. Science and technology are essential for national development and progress. The state shall give priority to research and development, invention, innovation, and their utilization. And to science and technology education, training, and services. It shall support indigenous, appropriate, and self-reliant scientific and technological capabilities, and their application to the country's productive systems and national life. Section 11. The Congress may provide for incentives, including tax deductions, to encourage private participation in programs of basic and applied scientific research. Scholarships, grants and aid, or other forms of incentives shall be provided to deserving science students, researchers, scientists, inventors, technologists, and specially gifted citizens. Section 12. The state shall regulate the transfer and promote the adaptation of technology from all sources for the national benefit. It shall encourage the widest participation of private groups, local governments, and community-based organizations in the generation and utilization of science and technology. Section 13. The state shall protect and secure the exclusive rights of scientists, inventors, artists, 
and other gifted citizens to their intellectual property and creations, particularly when beneficial to the people, for such period as may be provided by law. Arts and Culture Section 14 The state shall foster the preservation, enrichment, and dynamic evolution of a Filipino national culture based on the principle of unity and diversity in a climate of free artistic and intellectual expression. Section 15 Arts and letters shall enjoy the patronage of the state. The state shall conserve, promote, and popularize the nation's historical and cultural heritage and resources, as well as artistic creations. Section 16 All the country's artistic and historic wealth constitutes the cultural treasure of the nation and shall be under the protection of the state which may regulate its disposition. Section 17 The state shall recognize, respect, and protect the rights of indigenous cultural communities to preserve and develop their cultures, traditions, and institutions. It shall consider these rights in the formulation of national plans and policies. Section 18. 1. The state shall ensure equal access to cultural opportunities through the educational system, public or private cultural entities, scholarships, grants and other incentives and community cultural centers, and other public venues. 2. The state shall encourage and support researches and studies on the arts and culture. Sports Section 19 1. The state shall promote physical education and encourage sports programs, league competitions, and amateur sports, including training for international competitions, to foster self-discipline, teamwork, and excellence for the development of a healthy and alert citizenry. 2. All educational institutions shall undertake regular sports activities throughout the country in cooperation with athletic clubs and other sectors. Article XV The Family Section 1. The state recognizes the Filipino family as the foundation of the nation. Accordingly, it shall strengthen its solidarity and actively promote its total development. Section 2. Marriage, as an inviolable social institution, is the foundation of the family and shall be protected by the state. Section 3. The state shall defend 1. The right of spouses to found a family in accordance with their religious convictions and the demands of responsible parenthood. 2. The right of children to assistance, including proper care and nutrition, and special protection from all forms of neglect, abuse, cruelty exploitation and other conditions prejudicial to their development the right of the family to a family living wage and income and three the right of families or family associations to participate in the planning and implementation of policies and programs that affect them section 4 the family has the duty to care for its elderly members but the state may also do so through just programs of social security Article XVI General Provisions Section 1 The flag of the Philippines shall be red, white, and blue, with a sun and three stars, as consecrated and honored by the people and recognized by law. Section 2 The Congress may, by law, adopt a new name for the country, a national anthem, or a national seal, which shall all be truly reflective and symbolic of the ideals, history, and traditions of the people. Such law shall take effect only upon its ratification by the people in a national referendum. Section 3. The state may not be sued without its consent. Section 4. The armed forces of the Philippines shall be composed of a citizen armed force which shall undergo military training and serve as may be provided by law. It shall keep a regular force necessary for the security of the state. Section 5. 1. All members of the armed forces shall take an oath or affirmation to uphold and defend this constitution too. The state shall strengthen the patriotic spirit and nationalist consciousness of the military, and respect for people's rights in the performance of their duty. 3. Professionalism in the armed forces and adequate remuneration and benefits of its members shall be a prime concern of the state. The armed forces shall be insulated from partisan politics. No member of the military shall engage, directly or indirectly, in any partisan political activity, except to vote. 4. No member of the armed forces in the active service shall, 
at any time, be appointed or designated in any capacity to a civilian position in the government, including government-owned or controlled corporations or any of their subsidiaries. 5. Laws on retirement of military officers shall not allow extension of their service. 6. The officers and men of the regular force of the armed forces shall be recruited proportionately from all provinces and cities as far as practicable. 7. The tour of duty of the Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces shall not exceed three years. However, in times of war or other national emergency declared by the Congress, the President may extend such tour of duty. Section 6. The state shall establish and maintain one police force, which shall be national in scope and civilian in character, to be administered and controlled by a national police commission. The authority of local executives over the police units in their jurisdiction shall be provided by law. Section 7. The state shall provide immediate and adequate care, benefits, and other forms of assistance to war veterans and veterans of military campaigns, their surviving spouses and orphans. Funds shall be provided therefore and due consideration shall be given them in the disposition of agricultural lands of the public domain and, in appropriate cases, in the utilization of natural resources. Section 8. The state shall, from time to time, review to increase the pensions and other benefits due to retirees of both the government and the private sectors. Section 9. The state shall protect consumers from trade malpractices and from substandard or hazardous products. Section 10. The state shall provide the policy environment for the full development of Filipino capability and the emergence of communication structures suitable to the needs and aspirations of the nation in the balanced flow of information into, out of, and across the country, in accordance with a policy that respects the freedom of speech and of the press. Section 11. 1. The ownership and management of mass media shall be limited to citizens of the Philippines or to corporations, cooperatives or associations, wholly owned and managed by such citizens. The Congress shall regulate or prohibit monopolies in commercial mass media when the public interest so requires. No combinations in restraint of trade or unfair competition therein shall be allowed. 2. The advertising industry is impressed with public interest and shall be regulated by law for the protection of consumers and the promotion of the general welfare. Only Filipino citizens or corporations or associations at least 70% of the capital of which is owned by such citizens shall be allowed to engage in the advertising industry. The participation of foreign investors in the governing body of entities in such industry shall be limited to their proportionate share in the capital thereof, and all the executive and managing officers of such entities must be citizens of the Philippines. Section 12. The Congress may create a consultative body to advise the President on policies affecting indigenous cultural communities, the majority of the members of which shall come from such communities. Article XVII Amendments or Revisions Section 1 Any amendment to, or, revision of, this Constitution may be proposed by, 1. The Congress, upon a vote of three-fourths of all its members. Or 2. A Constitutional Convention. Section 2. Amendments to this Constitution may likewise be directly proposed by the people through initiative upon a petition of at least 12% of the total number of registered voters, of which every legislative district must be represented by at least 3% of the registered voters therein. No amendment under this section shall be authorized within five years following the ratification of this Constitution nor oftener than once every five years thereafter. The Congress shall provide for the implementation of the exercise of this right. Section 3. The Congress may, by a vote of two-thirds of all its members, call a constitutional convention, or by a majority vote of all its members, submit to the electorate the question of calling such a convention. Section 4. Any amendment to, or revision of, this Constitution under Section 1 hereof shall be valid when ratified by a majority of the votes cast in a plebiscite which shall be held not earlier than 60 days nor later than 90 days after the approval of such amendment or revision. 
any amendment under Section 2 hereof shall be valid when ratified by a majority of the votes cast in a plebiscite which shall be held not earlier than 60 days nor later than 90 days after the certification by the Commission on Elections of the Sufficiency of the Petition. Article XVIII Transitory Provisions Section 1 the first elections of members of the Congress under this Constitution shall be held on the second Monday of May, 1987. The first local elections shall be held on a date to be determined by the President, which may be simultaneous with the election of the members of the Congress. It shall include the election of all members of the city or municipal councils in the metropolitan Manila area. Section 2. The Senators, members of the House of Representatives, and the local officials first elected under this Constitution shall serve until noon of June 30, 1992. Of the Senators elected in the elections in 1992, the first 12 obtaining the highest number of votes shall serve for six years and the remaining 12 for three years. Section 3. All existing laws, decrees, executive orders, proclamations, letters of instructions, and other executive issuances not inconsistent with this Constitution shall remain operative until amended, repealed, or revoked. Section 4. All existing treaties or international agreements which have not been ratified shall not be renewed or extended without the concurrence of at least two-thirds of all the members of the Senate. Section 5. The six-year term of the incumbent president and vice president elected in the February 7, 1986 election is for purposes of synchronization of elections, hereby extended to noon of June 30, 1992. The first regular elections for the President and Vice President under this Constitution shall be held on the second Monday of May, 1992. Section 6. The incumbent President shall continue to exercise legislative powers until the first Congress is convened. Section 7. Until a law is passed, the President may fill by appointment from a list of nominees by the respective sectors, the seats reserved for sectoral representation in paragraph 2, section 5 of Article V1 of this Constitution. Section 8. Until otherwise provided by the Congress, the President may constitute the Metropolitan Manila Authority to be composed of the heads of all local government units comprising the Metropolitan Manila area. Section 9. A sub-province shall continue to exist and operate until it is converted into a regular province or until its component municipalities are reverted to the mother province. Section 10. All courts existing at the time of the ratification of this constitution shall continue to exercise their jurisdiction, until otherwise provided by law. The provisions of the existing rules of court. Judiciary Acts and procedural laws not inconsistent with this Constitution shall remain operative unless amended or repealed by the Supreme Court or the Congress. Section 11. The incumbent members of the judiciary shall continue in office until they reach the age of 70 years or become incapacitated to discharge the duties of their office or are removed for cause. Section 12. The Supreme Court shall, within one year after the ratification of this Constitution, adopt a systematic plan to expedite the decision or resolution of cases or matters pending in the Supreme Court or the lower courts prior to the effectivity of this Constitution. A similar plan shall be adopted for all special courts and quasi-judicial bodies. Section 13. The legal effect of the lapse before the ratification of this Constitution, of the applicable period for the decision or resolution of the cases or matters submitted for adjudication by the courts, shall be determined by the Supreme Court as soon as practicable. Section 14. The provisions of paragraphs 3 and 4, Section 15 of Article VIII of this Constitution shall apply to cases or matters filed before the ratification of this Constitution when the applicable period lapses after such ratification. Section 15. The incumbent members of the Civil Service Commission, the Commission on Elections, and the Commission on Audit shall continue in office for one year after the ratification of this Constitution, unless they are sooner removed for cause or become incapacitated to discharge the duties of their office or appointed to a new term thereunder. In no case shall any member serve longer than seven years including service before the ratification of this Constitution. Section 16. 
career civil service employees separated from the service not for cause but as a result of the reorganization pursuant to Proclamation No. 3 dated March 25, 1986 and the reorganization following the ratification of this constitution shall be entitled to appropriate separation pay and to retirement and other benefits accruing to them under the laws of general application in force at the time of their separation. In lieu thereof, at the option of the employees, they may be considered for employment in the government or in any of its subdivisions, instrumentalities, or agencies, including government-owned or controlled corporations and their subsidiaries. This provision also applies to career officers whose resignation, tendered in line with the existing policy, had been accepted. Section 17. Until the Congress provides otherwise, the President shall receive an annual salary of 300,000 pesos. The Vice President, the President of the Senate, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, and the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, 240,000 pesos each. The Senators, the Members of the House of Representatives, the Associate Justices of the Supreme Court, and the Chairman of the Constitutional Commissions, 204,000 pesos each and the members of the Constitutional Commissions, 180,000 pesos each. Section 18. At the earliest possible time, the government shall increase the salary skills of the other officials and employees of the national government. Section 19. All properties, records, equipment, buildings, facilities, and other assets of any office or body abolished or reorganized under Proclamation No. 3 dated March 25, 1986 or this Constitution shall be transferred to the office or body to which its powers, functions, and responsibilities substantially pertain. Section 20. The First Congress shall give priority to the determination of the period for the full implementation of free public secondary education. Section 21. The Congress shall provide efficacious procedures and adequate remedies for the reversion to the state of all lands of the public domain and real rights connected therewith which were acquired in violation of the Constitution or the public land laws, or through corrupt practices. No transfer or disposition of such lands or real rights shall be allowed until after the lapse of one year from the ratification of this Constitution. Section 22. At the earliest possible time, the government shall expropriate idle or abandoned agricultural lands as may be defined by law, for distribution to the beneficiaries of the Agrarian Reform Program. Section 23. Advertising entities affected by Paragraph 2, Section 11 of Article XV1 of this Constitution shall have five years from its ratification to comply on a graduated and proportionate basis with the minimum Filipino ownership requirement therein. Section 24. Private armies and other armed groups not recognized by duly constituted authority shall be dismantled. All paramilitary forces including civilian home defense forces not consistent with the citizen armed force established in this constitution, shall be dissolved or, where appropriate, converted into the regular force. Section 25. After the expiration in 1991 of the agreement between the Republic of the Philippines and the United States of America concerning military bases, foreign military bases, troops, or facilities shall not be allowed in the Philippines except under a treaty duly concurred in by the Senate and, when the Congress so requires, ratified by a majority of the votes cast by the people in a national referendum held for that purpose and recognized as a treaty by the other contracting state. Section 26. The authority to issue sequestration or freeze orders under Proclamation No. 3 dated March 25, 1986 inches relation to the recovery of ill-gotten wealth shall remain operative for not more than 18 months after the ratification of this Constitution. However, in the national interest, as certified by the President, the Congress may extend such period. A sequestration or freeze order shall be issued only upon showing of a prima facie case. The order and the list of the sequestered or frozen properties shall forthwith be registered with the proper court. For orders issued before the ratification of this constitution, the corresponding judicial action or proceeding shall be filed within six months from its ratification. For those issued after such ratification, the judicial action or proceeding shall be commenced within six months from the issuance thereof. 
the sequestration or freeze order is deemed automatically lifted if no judicial action or proceeding is commenced as herein provided. Section 27. This constitution shall take effect immediately upon its ratification by a majority of the votes cast in a plebiscite held for the purpose and shall supersede all previous constitutions. The foregoing proposed Constitution of the Republic of the Philippines was approved by the Constitutional Commission of 1986 on the 12th day of October, 1986, and accordingly signed on the 15th day of October, 1986 at the Plenary Hall, National Government Center, Quezon City, by the commissioners whose signatures are hereunder affixed. Adopted, President, Cecilia Munoz Palma and of Segment. Like. Share and subscribe this YouTube channel to receive more law-related contents. See our playlist in the description. Thank you. End of segment. Like, share and subscribe to this YouTube channel to continue watching this content. The Congress See shall establish in the independent central monetary authority. The members of whose government